Hello everyone, it is Shroom River here and welcome to a brand new series on the channel. This is something that I've been planning for a very long time indeed. I'm super hyped to get kicked off with it. So welcome one and all to the D&D lock. Yes indeed, this is going to be a variation on the classic Nuzlocke um, kind of run of Pokemon games. We're going to be playing on Heart Gold, so let's get kicked right off. Uh, like I say, I've been planning this for a very long time indeed. Um, we don't need any more information about the game. We've all played Pokemon before. I'd have loved to have played this on a more recent game than Heart Gold, uh, but unfortunately, my shitty laptop can't handle anything more recent than Gen 4 or 5. So we're just going to run through the uh, opening of this as quickly as possible. Um, because this is essentially going to be a preamble to the actual playthrough, where we're just going to go through the rules. In D&D, we call this a session zero. Um, and so this is going to be where you just go over the rules, ground rules, set parameters of how the playthrough is going to work. Um, so, yeah, we'll get through that, and then we'll get into sort of more about what this playthrough is going to be. Um, and uh, how the rules are going to work. So let's get the, uh, the character stuff done first. All of this stuff. Um, I will tell you my name. Uh, my name is, in fact, Shroom, all in caps, because they're going to be yelling my name a lot, because I'm basically going to be the champion. Uh, so yes. Yes, I am ready. Let's get into this. Lovely. Shrink ourselves down to the game playing size, and here we are. So, as you probably know from the stuff I upload, I absolutely love d and It's one of my favourite pastimes, one of my favourite things to do. I play a lot of it. Um, and when I started uploading d and content to the channel uh, with the Mini Maker stuff, I wanted to find a way to combine d and and Pokemon. And a fair while ago, um, I watched uh, live streaming on Twitch uh, the wonderful Chaos Twins, Tom and Ree, part of High Rollers, uh, who are part of the Yogscast. Uh, doing what they called a sort of D&D &D lock, where basically they played through, I think it was um, Emerald's version they played through. Um, and they were running through it as a Nuzlocke, but they introduced some D&D &D rules. Uh, so, for example, um, in the normal Nuzlocke, when a Pokemon dies, it's done. In their version of it, they introduced the concept of death saving throws. Now, this is what happens in Dungeons & Dragons when your character goes down to zero hit points. You start rolling death saving throws, where you roll a 20-sided die, and if you get a 10 or above, you get a pass. If you get a 9 or below, you get a fail. If you get three, su three successes, your character lives. If you get three failures, your character dies. So they started doing that with their uh, Pokemon. Whenever they died, they rolled death saves, and if they passed... They got to go again. If they failed, they were done, and that was it for that Pokemon. So I'm kind of introducing that kind of vibe to it, but um, what I actually have, am going to do is, as opposed to the normal Nuzlocke rules, where you know you catch one Pokemon per route, um, and you can only use or catch that Pokemon, we're going to be doing that, but instead of using those Pokemon, we're going to use them as quote-unquote tokens. Because the Pokemon we're going to use in this playthrough are limited in number. We are going to be using 14 Pokemon in this playthrough, one for each of the playable classes in the game of Dungeons & Dragons. The Pokemon I felt, up to Generation 4, best represented that class. Like I said, I wanted to do stuff from like Gen 6 and beyond, because you've got classes like Paladin, which was built for like Aegislash, but my computer couldn't handle it, so unfortunately... That's not, that's not possible. So we're doing Gen 4. All these rules will be in the description down below, by the way. So, you know, any confusion, there'll be a proper list of it there. I'm not following the script. I'm kind of just rambling on. The basic thing of it is we have 14 Pokemon to choose from uh, and we will be running death saving throws if they go down. Now, obviously there are more than 14 encounters in the game, but there are only 14 Pokemon we can choose from. So... The Pokemon we catch will either be set aside as tokens to add another Pokemon from our list into our active party, or we can use them as a token for a death saving throw. So when a Pokemon dies, we have to have death saving throws banked in order to use them. Sound fair? I think it does. So, we're going to try and get on with the game right about now, because as I say, this is just our introductory thing. Um, we're going to talk to our mother here, which is, which is nice. Um, hello, yes, I am awake. Um, I am going to speed this bit up a little bit. Uh, because, you know, we've all been through this. We don't need to see this every single time. Um, so she's going to give us all our stuff. You know, bag, trainer cards, save progress, uh, options. We need those because this, this is painful to watch, really. Um, 
So now we'll just speed up the uh, that. Perfect. Uh, we need to go down to confirm, unfortunately, but that will do. So now we have some fast writing. So, uh, how is this game different from a regular game in terms of what we run into? Well, all the Pokémon in the wild are as they were. All the starters are as they were. Nothing randomized there. Um, but all the trainer Pokémon, they're completely random because anything can happen what you're coming up against. Uh, I've tried to keep um, as much regular as possible. Uh, so all the wild Pokémon are regular. Um, and all the Pokémon that we run into in trainer battles are going to be kind of of the same challenge level. So we're not going to run into like a trainer on the first route with like a Kyogre and a Charizard, I don't know. Um, and the game might lag a little bit again because my computer is slow. I've got, um, I've got the game running, I've got my recording running. Uh, I've also, you'll notice, hopefully, there's two die in the, uh, on the screen. You've got a, a D20 and a D12. We'll be using those. Um, the D20 is what we use for our death saving throws. The D12 is what we'll use to determine which Pokémon joins our team. The Pokémon at the bottom of the screen, by the way, are blacked out. Uh, so, you know, you can probably tell what they are just by looking. Um, but yeah, the Pokémon are blacked out, so we effectively, quote-unquote, don't know what Pokémon we're using. Hi, Professor Elm. Um, you take way too long to talk. Uh, yeah, we're going to speed this bit up just so we can get through it. Um, so he's going to give us a Pokémon. It doesn't matter what Pokémon we choose, we're not going to be using it. So, once we get this Pokémon and we get to a Pokemon Center, there will be 14 eggs in a box and we will roll our D12 to determine which of that those Pokemon join our team. Two of them we'll have to take out, obviously. Uh, there'll be the two classes in D&D that were added most recently. Um, so let's just grab a Pokemon. It doesn't really matter, we'll grab... Um, we'll take Totodile, just because it's quick enough to run away from things. We're not using this Pokemon. So, that is going to be our first token Pokemon. Um, we're not going to give it a nickname because we don't need to. So let's get through this section and I'll explain a little bit more about the Pokemon we're going to be using and why we've chosen them. So he's telling us to go to Professor Elm. That is fine. Off we go. This guy's going to give us some potions, I believe. I have the speed up button held down for this particular bit. Um, just because the, the, game is run the game runs slowly. There's nothing I can do about that. Like, look, this is it running as it is. It's awful. It's just awful. And now we've got to talk to Lyra. There's a lot to get through in this opening part. So as I say, we will just hold the speed up button to get through it. Uh, we're also going to have to run into Professor Elm who gives us his number, which he couldn't give us before, quite possibly. We've got to go and talk to our mother. We've got to talk to Elm. Go away, Lyra. I don't have time to talk to you. You see, this is, this is us holding the speed up button down. Like, it's just, it's painfully slow. This is us without the speed up button held down. So, yeah, she's going to give us, um... She's going to give us the phone, I think. Um, the Poke Gear, sorry. Which is where we can make phone calls from. Not that we're going to be able to be using that. Uh, yes, I do. And she tells us anyway. Thanks, Mum. I know how to use a phone. Get, stop talking, I have an adventure to go on. Um, so, yes, off we, off we trot. Very painfully slowly, uh, of course. Please hurry up. And here comes Elm, because he has to give us his number. He sure does take a while. Thank you for the number. This is running so slowly, I hate it. There's nothing, I'll say, there's nothing I can do about how slowly this is running. <clears throat> so now we can start going off. Um, we're not going to be fighting any wild Pokemon with Totodile. We don't need to. <clears throat> so while we're on our way to the next city, um, I'll go over the sort of more D&D &D aspects of this that we're using. I've already explained about the death saving throws. Um... But now we can get a little bit of a look into the kind of Pokemon we're going to be using. As I mentioned, we have 14 Pokemon to choose from. Um, and each of them is based on a playable class in Dungeons & Dragons. So, let's go over those classes now. The ones we have. Um, the classes in D&D, &D, uh, we have a Barbarian, which is a rage fueled uh, melee attacking brute force kind of warrior. We have the Bard, who is a charisma-based casting uh, support class. 
we have the cleric who is a uh, sort of half caster half melee often heavy armors healing class we have the druid who is another kind of healing class also a casting magic user uh, mostly based around nature the fighter is often a useful starting class for first timers it's basically just your your bread and butter of just doing battles and fighting people uh, the monk is a hand-to-hand -hand combatant with a lot of sort of uh, monk-esque not magic powers but uh but magically trained combat powers we have the paladin who is a very heavily armored holy warrior uh semi-caster but mostly melee usually the ranger is um a uh, an, a sort of outlander kind of um uh, class some magic use but mostly uh weapon attack and tracking most often seen as a uh, ranged attacker you have the rogue who is kind of like a sort of sneaky dexterous character that does a lot of infiltration uh and sneak attacks uh sorcerer is your very powerful one of your very powerful um casting classes it's a dps magic class that uses charisma as its caster you have the warlock who is uh another magic user but gets its power from making a deal with a, a deity of some description uh, and then you have the wizards, which is the uh, the classic magic casting intelligence based class. Those are the twelve classes we will initially choose from when we're rolling our dice to determine which Pokemon we get. You also have two new classes, which bring up to fourteen. You have the artificer, which is a semi magic class based around uh, using magic through items that have been created, and you have the blood hunter, which is the edgy class, which basically uh, trades your own life force to do more damage. So those are the 14 playable classes in Dungeons & Dragons, and those are the, the classes that our Pokemon are going to be based off. I've tried to make these as close as possible thematically to the kind of Pokemon that we're using. And as I say, every time we um, encounter a Pokemon and catch it, we can choose to roll a d12 to get one of these Pokemon added to our active roster, or we can use that Pokemon to trade in for Death Saving Throw and save that for another time. We also have a few Pokemon that are evolution-based, um, sorry, evolution-based, that are item-based evolutions uh, on the list. I'm not going to say what they are, but um, I'm also going to add in the, uh, the caveat that we can use an encounter that we catch to trade in for an item evolution. Uh, there's a few of those, just because the items aren't guaranteed to get very early and they're a bit difficult to get sometimes. So I've thrown those in um, to help us out. We get the running shoes here, which is nice. We will be holding the B button to sprint, which is awesome. So now we can move a bit faster, which is lovely. So we're going to end things off here, I think. I've explained as much of the rules as I can. As I say, they will be in the, um, in the description. My god, it's slow in here. Um, so let's save it. As I say, we haven't been playing for all that long, but that's fine. We're going to be saving it here. It saves a lot of data. So that is going to be the uh, the Session Zero intro to this D&D lock. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you've enjoyed and are excited to see how this series is going to go. Next time, we're going to continue onwards, get our first Pokemon. We'll roll on the dice roller to see which Pokemon we're going to add to the party. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a few encounters, add some more Pokemon and or death saves and or evolutions. Who can say? to our um to our team and i guess we'll just go from there but uh i'm gonna wrap up here because i rammed on far too long so my final thank you to you all for watching and i guess with that i'll see you next time laters